Uh, I'm a co-sponsor of this amendment, support this amendment. I think it's a great idea and will lower drug prices. Um, really, nobody should have to play a guessing game with their regulator just to bring safe and effective products to market. There's no other regulated industry that works that way. Imagine if the state of California was allowed to say to car manufacturers, sorry, your new model doesn't meet our emission standards, but we won't tell you what the emission standards are. Better luck next time. Um, this is just about providing information. This is what it always was done up until 2015. This was changed not by Congress. This was changed by the FDA. We're supposed to be in charge. If we want generics to come forward with ink generics lower prices, let's give them the information so they can meet the standards. Uh, this is simply Big Pharma wanting to stop generics to come forward. And so I think it's a very good amendment. I think it uh, has a, a very good chance of, of lowering prices. There's some argument saying, well, this is invasive of intellectual property. The problem with that argument is this all begins after your intellectual property has expired. This is after your patent expires. You're trying to bring a, a generic forward, and then they won't tell you. Did you have a little too much of this inert ingredient, ingredient a little too little? You know, for goodness sakes, let's tell them what, the, you know, what they're doing and, and help them to get there. Here's a good example of the gamesmanship that this amendment will stop. It happened with Restasis, a prescription eye drop to treat dry eye. All of its patents expired in 2014, but generic companies had to spend nearly a decade going back and forth playing a guessing game with the FDA while the price of Restasis kept going up and up every year. By the time a generic got to the market, the price of Restasis had gone up 250%. That's not the real marketplace. What we're trying to get to is more of a marketplace. I wholeheartedly support this amendment. It passed 17 to 5 last time. So I think those who voted last time ought to explain, you know, why they aren't going to vote yes this time. It's a very good amendment, and I think we'll help the bill. Thank you. For the discussion on Hassan 1. Dearest friends, I have big news to share with you this Saturday. Congress is expected to make some adjustments to the SNAP program, with the price of everyday necessities increasing, SNAP benefits are not going as far as they should, and several lawmakers are looking at how they can improve the relief program. But it's expected that many will oppose this plan. My dearest friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video, especially if you receive monthly benefits. Also, every Friday, I will be announcing more winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the giveaway, friends, please make sure that you click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances, my friends, of winning the giveaways. In the coming months, Congress is expected to reauthorize the SNAP program, the country's largest food assistance program that helps poor families afford groceries. Amidst ongoing debt ceiling negotiations, Republicans have focused on SNAP's work provisions, proposing expansions to work requirements and identifying employment as a program goal. These efforts are key to providing better assistance to beneficiaries. Enhanced benefits under the SNAP ended on March 1, 2023, and a significant share of households are now reporting food insufficiency. The latest data release last week marks a full first period of data collection since the end of the enhanced SNAP benefits, and it reveals that households in many states that were distributing the extra benefits experienced lower levels of food insufficiency compared to those in states distributing standard SNAP amounts. Households in the states that opted out of the emergency allotments early reported that they often do not have adequate food to eat at higher rates than those in states that continued to distribute additional SNAP benefits. Now one in four households in the 32 states impacted by the policy change are reporting they either sometimes or often do not have enough to eat. For some households that received benefits up until the program's termination, the policy change has major implications. For instance, a family of four with a net monthly income of $2,000 received $939 more in SNAP benefits this year compared to before the crisis began. With the end of the emergency allotments, those families are now receiving 
$600 less each month. In total, roughly 32 million Americans are receiving smaller monthly SNAP payments. Other changes to SNAP include eligibility requirements. Republicans have passed a bill that would raise the age limit from 50 to 56 years old for work requirements that will affect qualification for SNAP benefits from 2024. Not meeting the minimum of 20 hours a week requirement over a three-month period would reduce or cancel food stamp benefits. In an effort to reach some kind of compromise, rules around the SNAP program could be adjusted in future years. This past Friday's better-than-expected jobs report defied interest rate hikes that aim to slash inflation by cooling the U.S. economy. Instead, the United States added 253,000 jobs in April, marking a slight decline from an average of 290,000 over the previous six months. The unemployment rate fell to 3.4 percent, matching a 54-year low. Government data showed that the job gains did not accrue evenly across all sectors. Some industries posted blockbuster expansions, while others lagged far behind. The sector that featured the most job gains covers a wide-reaching set of positions, referred to as business and professional services, which includes attorneys, accountants, managers, and computer engineers, among many others. The sector added 43,000 jobs last month, nearly doubling an average of 25,000 jobs gained over the previous six months. The major expansion arrives despite high-profile layoffs last month in the media and tech industries, with some cuts involving management of companies such as Lyft and Disney. Healthcare, an industry that has shown strong job growth in recent months, continued at a blistering pace in April. According to experts, the performance in this industry owes in large part to the aging U.S. population. About 17% of Americans are 65 years of age or older. That share of the population, which counts 55.7 million people, has grown nearly 40% since year 2010. Employment at nursing and residential care facilities made up almost a quarter of jobs added in the sector last month. Leisure and hospitality, an industry decimated by the crisis, also sustained strong job growth in April as it continued to climb back towards pre-crisis employment levels. Many economists say that the shortfall of workers leaves room for growth in the sector, no matter how wide the economy fares. Well, my amazing and beautiful friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you, my friends, for being part of this community and for being here every single day. To show my appreciation and to say thank you, I will be announcing more winners next week for the Walmart gift card giveaway. My friends, if you'd like to enter these weekly giveaways, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dear friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed weekend.